Hi everybody. I hope you're all doing well. It's Saturday and um, got a couple of projects to show you. One of them is pretty much mostly done, which is the one that's spinning around on the turntable right now. And this is the one sixth scale uh, United Empire Miniatures bust of Play-Doh. And um, finished this up, or mostly finished it up um, I don't know, Thursday, I think, maybe Friday, I can't remember now. Anyway, um, I painted this with acrylics and oils. And I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. I, I think it, this was actually a really, really fun project. Um, I really like the larger scale bust on this, especially for the face, because it gave a lot more uh, chances to work on, you know, more defined skin tones and work on the eyes. Um, this bust is actually taken from, uh, I guess there's a bronze casting or stone um, piece that's in a museum in Italy, I think. I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, of him, and this is what this is a copy of. I'm not exactly sure where the, where the actual stone or bronze uh, piece is, but I have seen a picture of it online. Um, but, uh, so this is modeled after that, which is obviously not probably what Plato will look like, but, eh, we'll go with it. So anyway, uh, this is what I've got. Um, I, like I said, this was a lot of fun. I really like this scale of painting it was a lot of fun. A lot of detail that you can get in there. Even though the the face itself, um, you know, it doesn't have a whole lot of, you know, lines and things like that, like, you know, some other faces and everything else, but it was, it was a fun project. And I would like to actually do something this scale again, if I can find something where there's, you know, some, a good size, piece to paint. So there's that. I'm not going to make this video terribly long, although I do have a few things to show you. Uh, let me, um, let me pause the video for a second and get Play-Doh out of the way. And then I'll show you the next thing I'm working on. Be right back. Okay. Here's the next piece that I've started. And this is from Dark Sword Miniatures. It's a one-tenth scale resin bust, and it's called The Portrait of a Young Tiefling. That's T-I-E-F-L-I-N-G. Obviously, it's a fantasy figure. Uh, there's some really, really lovely details on it, as you can see. And um, I first... <clears throat> Excuse me, I first saw this on Dark Sword Miniatures website when I was purchasing some other figures and I decided I had to go back and get it, which I did. I had no idea what a, a tiefling or a tiefling, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, is or what kind of character it was or anything like that. I just really liked the detail of the bust. Um, and I know I've showed this before, but this is also the character's arms is holding this quasi cat as well. And there's just some really, really great detail on this. Anyway, um, so doing some research online for this character, uh, I came across uh, most of them all had like normal skin tones and I decided I wanted to do something different and in my search to find something a little bit different I actually found one where the character actually had uh, magenta-ish purple skin 
So that's what I decided to go with this time. Um, I've been working on this for most of the day today. Uh, so you're getting to see it for the first time. Just turn this around a little bit. See some of the other detail on here. I mean, the sculpting is beautiful. I mean, look at all the braids and everything else for the hair. And I'm going to show you a, a photo of uh, my reference piece, essentially. And I'll flash that up in the screen in a second. Okay. And uh, so essentially that's my reference. That's kind of what I took the, the skin tones from. Um, I, the eyes itself, I decided I wanted to try to do something also a little bit different since it's not a true human character. I tried to give it some non-human eyes. Um, I'm going to go back and touch those up a little bit. I'm not 100% happy with them yet, uh, but essentially that's where I'm at with that. But I, what I'm going to stop the video here, I'm going to readjust the camera so you can see some stuff. But I wanted to show you uh, a little bit of the process that I went through to get to these colors here. And uh, I, I just thought maybe you might find that interesting. So uh, give me a moment, let me readjust the cameras and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So what you're seeing in front of you here is a little bit of a painting chart that I decided to try to do to try to recreate some of the colors that were on that um, photo. So what I did, I tried to come up with the magenta purple violet color. Um, I tried some different reds along with some different blues going across here to try to come up with something that I thought would work. And up here, bring it into focus maybe. So up here, this is scale 75's primary red and each box across here has that. Then across here is ultramarine blue Thalo blue, scale 75, primary blue, and cerulean blue, okay? And then the blues carry across all the way down to the bottom, okay? Same thing with the ultramarine. But then I also did uh, cadmium red light, cadmium red medium, cad red, and alizarin crimson. And then those carried all the way across for each blue. So essentially those are the reds that I had. I decided to try and I went for it. So you can see how each one's a little bit different. So I put down the red first. You can see what the actual colors were here and here. And then I decided I was gonna to try to see what it would look like if I glazed it. So I put the red down first. I then put a that blue very thinly over the red to see how it would turn out and as you can tell as you go across the different blues create different essentially different colors right as they go across and i did that one for each one i eventually instead of trying to do the glaze I ended up doing, I ended up mixing my colors and I ended up taking uh, ultramarine blue and cad red for the base purple or the darkest. And then I started to work myself out using a little cad red light, mix those two together. Um, and then for some of the really dark, dark shadows, I used the lizard and crimson and uh, thalo blue because it was a really really dark purple and then um, I ended up grabbing I just did some of these colors to get my lighter blends so that's how I kind of came across that or what I did to get to where I was at now <clears throat> the eye now don't laugh I don't freehand draw very well 
but this was the idea for the eye. So I used white with a little ultramarine blue in it for the sclera here. And then just a Hansa yellow, uh, no, it was Hansa yellow, but I can't, uh, Hansa yellow light. And I painted in the iris and then I took the ultramarine blue and cad red and painted in the iris. Okay, so that's ultimately what I wanted the eye to look like. And like I said, I have to go back and readjust it a little bit. I'm not 100% happy with it, but um, I kind of had to give myself a, uh, a chance to um, uh, let it sit or I'd end up really messing it up. So I had to go do something else and then I'll go back to it. Anyway, there's that. And then also, a little mail call today. See if I can get this open real quick. Sorry, unprepared. I got some Ebor miniatures in. Sorry for the dead space, folks. Boy, can't really touch this. Okay. There we go. This actually came in a soft envelope, which I wasn't really expecting. Good morning, how are you? Sorry about that, everybody. I did not expect this to be this difficult when I opened it. Dead air, dead air. Alright, here we go. There we go. Okay, so this is for Ebor Miniatures. And these should be French. World War One, 28 millimeter figures. Okay. This is not going nearly as smooth as I had wanted it to. There we go. Aha, success. We're in, maybe, maybe not. Ah! Definitely packed it well. Okay, note to self, don't cut yourself on live uh, YouTube video. All right, here we go. There we are. Hey, there's one of them. All right. I'm gonna get some more light on this so you can actually see it. So here we go. Focus, maybe. Maybe not. There we are. So you bore miniatures, World War One French infantry, and I essentially I bought one of their regiment packs. Sorry for knocking the camera around a little bit. So there's that. But these just showed up today. I hadn't even opened them, obviously. There's one that's firing. Really, really nice detail. Nice and crisp. All right. That's essentially <clears throat> what I have for today. So I just wanted to say thank you to all new subscribers I've uh, picked up over the last couple of days. Um, I appreciate everybody for leaving comments and 
Uh, I've been trying to keep up with everybody's videos too. There have been a lot of them. A lot of them I've just been able to watch on TV and I haven't been able to comment, so I apologize. I do like to leave comments. Um, also, I want to give a, sh a shout out again to uh, Rocky's War Room for having me on their episode um, last week. Uh, I actually had a whole lot of fun. Uh, it was a great time uh, talking with those gentlemen and also with everybody that was in the chat room too. For that particular video. Uh, so again, Rocky, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you to everybody who uh, tuned in to that as well. Well, uh, that's about all I have for today. The video is a little bit longer than I had thought, but I also didn't think that the uh, unboxing was going to go as haphazard as it did. Anyway, I hope everybody's having a great weekend, and I hope you're all staying safe, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.